99% of the things we worry about as human beings never happen. The biggest fears we have, the things we've conjured up, the worst case possible scenario never actually truly happen majority of the time. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Nicholas Davenport, aka Mr. Mental Muscle. And today we have a special episode because I want to talk about a channel that I have been watching the last few months by a guy named Chisha Zed. He has a lot of great content. He does reactions to different topics in the space of interpersonal dynamics with men and women, just being better. And this specific video that we're going to go over is great because it talks about stress and anxiety. And you already know you're here. I'm the mental guy, aka Mr. Mental Muscle, obviously, same my name. So the fact he's talking about mental health, especially for young men, this is very important because we know that the stats are not in our favor. We commit more suicides than women up to five times more likely. And this is a pressing issue, and it's not to belittle any other struggles that women go through, but it's something we need to bring more attention to. Now, if you understand mental health, it's just like any other skill. It can be promoted. It can be built upon now, the issue is we don't really talk about it. And when we do, it's not in a structured way. But I like what he talked about on this video. He used some advice from his father. He broke down some different concepts, such as like not taking things as an end-all, be-all, understanding the controlling situations, not giving up because it didn't go the way you anticipated. And I like this because when we talk about just general like personality, this can affect how you do with stress and anxiety. Because there's something called neuroticism, or also known as emotionality. And if you score high on this, you typically are someone who falters under pressure, you interpret negative things as an automatic loss, and you're less likely to take risks because you think the worst of every situation. Now, anxiety is not a bad thing. He mentioned in the video, he said that people think of this is the way it could go when they think of the worst case scenario, and that's all right. I'm not mad at that. I talked about it in my video called The Multiverse of Anxiety, how we have different branches that we can go down. And just like you mentioned, that's just one branch. And you can choose to focus on the 1% of things that happen, or you could choose to focus on the 99% of different possibilities that you've obsessed with, convinced yourself that that's definitely is what happening might happen, or you can choose to counter that by accepting the very real fact that you don't know the future. But this is a good thing to predict because we were wired and we evolved to understand that if we do this certain task, where can it lead to? Now, if we're right, it protected us, but if we're wrong, it could be our demise. So it was meant to help us out as a defense mechanism. But the problem, we live in a modern world and there's a lot of mismatches where the things from back then aren't as prominent. So our brain looks for reasons to worry. It looks for reasons to stress. And that's why people go down those routes and think only the worst. People prefer knowing that they're going to be dealing with a bad experience that they have dealt with before than basically wondering what bad experience the future may hold. But the beauty is the mind can think about anything. So why not build the pathways and make your brain prime to think of not just the worst, not just the best, but different routes that have different solutions because the brain makes these connections. And the more they make them connections, the more efficient it becomes at making those processes. So it becomes your default mode. Because like I mentioned, controlling the controllables, you don't always have a say in what's going to happen. You have things that you can influence, but you can't control every single thing. And there's even things that are completely out of your control. And once we understand this, we have more control of what we can do and get that we can change certain things. Then we have the ability to take our mental health into our own hands. This is not a catch-all term that just means happy. It means being productive to the best of your abilities. Now, sometimes your abilities won't be the highest. Sometimes they won't be the worst, but wherever they flex to, you have to adapt and realize where they are and then continue from that point. That's why this video had a lot of great aspects because it comes from a person who's not in the field. Now, me, I'm a practitioner, of course, so I have my ways of going about it. But the more people like Chisha talks about it, the better, because now it becomes more common. I always say talk about mental health commonly. But don't make it commonplace as it doesn't mean anything because we get into catch all terms like self care and just work on your mental health with actually no substance behind it. You're not really doing a service, especially in a world where men kind of get discounted a lot because feelings and emotions are not something that really gets tapped into because it's just society and I'm not mad at it, it is what it is. But well, we have to be able to talk about this more in a way that makes us better and gets our mind right. So make sure you follow Shisha Zed's page because it has a lot of great information and has a lot of content like this, as well as things on other topics. He brings great content and information. So check him out, subscribe, and also subscribe to my channel. And as always, guys, thanks for tuning in and get your mind right.